IoT is all about connecting tiny devices to the internet, right? But how do you make those tiny devices smart? That's what is called tiny ML, and that's the topic of today's IoT show with Miguel and Lagos. Hey everyone, this is Benjamin. I'm your host today on the IoT show. Welcome. Thanks for joining. I'm super thrilled to talk about all things machine learning today, machine learning on tiny devices. And I'm joined today by Miguel and Lycus. Um, guys, how about you introduce yourselves and tell us uh, a bit what you do at Microsoft? Miguel, do you want to go first? Sounds good. Hello, my name is Miguel Morales and I'm an IoT device specialist at Microsoft. Hey Lycus, welcome. Hey guys, this is Lycus, um, the um, technical specialist in IoT devices from Microsoft as well. Great, uh, and I think Lycus, you have some some great demos for us, and we'll uh, we'll, we'll we'll talk in a bit. Um, Miguel, there's one thing I wanted to to begin with. Like this is the IoT show. Like people, I I think know what IoT is, but uh, machine learning for for IoT. Like, can you can you maybe tell us a bit what it means to try and use like this? uh these fancy techniques to make uh to make things smart what does that mean for iot what are the typical use cases you see yeah absolutely i mean there's a, a tremendous amount that are emerging um which is what we're here to talk about but just to call out a few we see applications in sensor fusion so you're multi, you're combining uh blending optimizing sensor inputs to drive insights earlier and more efficiently at the edge um, anomaly detection for predictive maintenance is another uh, important thread. So essentially you're able to identify the normal operation and variations away from that and, and, and indicate the actions that should be taken as a result. Anomaly detection for security, digital signatures, network and, and communication patterns can be monitored for unexpected behavior. Even some video uh, so some video applications like person and object detection on on very small format microcontrollers are what we're discussing today. Okay, I see. Uh, interesting, actually, you mentioned um, doing like sensor fusion um, at, at the edge. When I think about machine learning and AI, like typically I think about those uh, like crazy beefy machines with with GPUs or like uh, um, machines in the cloud that do all the uh, all the, the training with with huge machines, etc. But you're telling me that like we are doing more and more uh, machine learning at the edge, essentially. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, the the machine learning started with very large compute implementations and cloud computing implementations. And increasingly, uh, customers and, and consumers are facing challenges with things like data latency, network throughput, reliability, energy consumption, even model accuracy. Um, privacy is becoming a consideration, uh, particularly when it comes to biometric data. So th these are all examples where you need more of that intelligence down at the, at, at the endpoint itself. And so, Tiny ML specifically refers to an emerging set of general purpose machine learning tools and models designed to execute in resource constrained low cost microcontroller or MCU architectures. I see. Okay. So, um, and, and there's tons of MCUs out there, right? So, I guess the, the idea is to be like, hey, uh, not only do I have like my sensors for temperature and whatnot, but what if I could actually make them uh, slightly smarter and use the fact that there's actually uh, uh, some some intelligence already in there to, to try and deploy some uh, some some machine learning model, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the the interesting part about TinyML is you, you're enabling artificial intelligence directly in the smallest and most ubiquitous endpoints that exist in the marketplace. So. The, the implications are huge. On a yearly basis, MCU shipments outpace MPU or microprocessor shipments by almost an order of magnitude. And they sell for more than an order of magnitude lower price. So when you start to pair those market dynamics with easy to, easy to use tools, a secure deployment vehicle, 
that's natively connected, you have the ingredients for a real tipping point in, in the embedded systems market. Okay, I see. But yeah, I mean, I think I, I mentioned that just before, like really when I think about machine learning, like I really don't think about this stuff that can actually run on super constrained devices. Now you're telling me that we are getting there. What what has changed essentially? What's made that possible? Well, a lot of things have changed and, and have made that possible, but we're going to focus in on, on three things today. Three major vectors that have contributed to the viability of tiny ML. So one is a, ultimately the reduction in resources required to train and execute a machine learning model. Two, improvements in the ease of development of the machine learning models. And three, the convergence of that capability with IoT technologies, specifically secure, natively connected MCUs and over the air updates. I see. And so MCUs, so microcontrollers, like what, what's your what's your definition of a microcontroller? Just to 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 make sure that uh, our audience gets like what it means. How small are we talking uh, about when it comes to to tiny ML? Yeah. So uh, specifically uh, for the sake of this conversation, we're we're focusing on Cortex M thirty two bit instruction sets. So this uh, and and in particular the demonstration platform that we're discussing today is an Azure Sphere microcontroller from Microsoft. It includes two Cortex-M cores as, as the targets to train and execute the models. And, and what you'll find is that many of the more popular or existing um, frameworks that are out there, like a TensorFlow or TVM, will add a, di a diminutive uh, to, to the- Right, to like the TensorFlow Light or- Exactly, yeah. exactly. Right. TensorFlow Light, micro TVM to indicate. And to date, in particular, we're honing in on four such solutions from uh, Microsoft partners. Some like resource optimization, one uh, that excels at, at, at being collaborative, easy use development tool. And then we'll talk a little bit about uh, the Azure Sphere MCU. I see. So yeah, so TinyML, it's ML on, on MCUs. So thanks for uh, highlighting like what, what was your, I guess, definition of uh, the typical uh, target for, for tiny ML. But then earlier you also mentioned uh, this is about like using all those insights you get from uh, from your um, your machine learning algorithms to to drive your IoT scenarios, right? So can, can you maybe, you mentioned Sphere and I, I think, I mean, I see Sphere as an IoT platform, essentially uh, an IoT hardware platform, just in a nutshell, what, what is here? Yeah, well, the idea is that however intelligent your MCU might be, if it, if it lives in its own echo chamber, then you're not gonna be able to get the maximum value out of that application, right? You're not gonna be able to, to, to learn in machine learning. You, you can't share your learnings. And so you need a secure link to your cloud or an on-premise application to, to make that uh, possible. And you don't just need a connection, but you also need features that integrate seamlessly with your IT and enterprise environment. So that's what Azure Sphere provides. It has secure silicon, it has a secure IoT channel connection. It even has a, a separate and secure OTA channel, an over-the-air update channel, in case you wanna update your ML models or the firmware in the future. So it pairs really nicely with TinyML. It creates that easy IoT baseline on which to build your new intelligent solution. In fact, uh, my peer, uh, my technical peer, Lycus, is going to talk about how TinyML solutions run on the Azure Sphere MCU. Is this demo time? <laughs> I think Lycus, so. you there? Hey, Benjamin. Hey, how's it going? So good, good. Do you, so. Yeah, we've been talking about like those um, sort of three pillars, I guess, of of, of tiny ML, right? With mm -hmm. and the fact that um, I mean, in order to just do tiny ML uh, for IoT in the first place, you need help uh, from like a tooling perspective, I guess. You need help from a let's make sure that my uh, model actually fits and runs on my small devices, uh, and then like let let's get some help on the um, connecting stuff to the IoT platform as well, right? So uh, what kind of demos do you have for us today? Showing a, so, a bit of everything, I guess. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of everything. Uh, so we are featuring a couple of solutions uh, today, uh, one of which we will demonstrate with the videos, um, but all of the solutions that we are featuring will be running on Azure Sphere. 
Um, and as Miguel mentioned earlier, uh, the first vector of innovations come from the resource optimizers in ML algorithm, right? And what mm -hmm. we mean by that, if you look at the typical machine learning processes, uh, you have two sides of world. One is the training side and the other one is the inferencing side, right? So the first partner that we are featuring today is called Cartesium. Cartesium has a product called Nano Edge, which essentially providing innovations on the training side of things. What it does is it allows users to push the machine learning training to the edge itself. What it helps here is in some of the scenario where you have a different environment that you want to operate in, uh, for example, different zero locations with temperature as a data point. Um, in the typical way of doing things, um, you might need to pre-train two sets of machine learning model for these two environments. So with Nano Edge platform, it allows you to push the training on the edge, which means you just probably have, just have to create a template, um, setting up a couple of data points that you want to set, and then you can just deploy on this type of environment and it will do the training by itself and inferencing and give you the result and insight that you want. I see. Oh, yeah, okay, so that, that yeah, that makes for like a super portable, uh, almost no training kind, kind of approach, but uh, I'm guessing there's also use cases where folks um, may have existing models based on mm -hmm. maybe de decades of data that they've acquired. And like, what if I want to take this data and turn it into a, a model that, that, that fits on, on small devices? Yeah, absolutely. For this type of customers, we will recommend OctoML. OctoML has a product called Optimizer, which essentially allowed you to take existing larger machine learning model and convert it into a tiny ML model for your hardware. Um, that model can run on the micro TV and runtime, which is miniaturized for Codex MCU, and in which our case, Azure Sphere. I see. So like I take an existing TensorFlow model mm -hmm. and I just convert it to something that runs on Sphere or other MCUs. Okay, cool. Yeah, TensorFlow, um, PyTorch, Onyx, uh, those type of models will be applicable as well. That's cool. Uh, but I mean, what, what if the model is more, I mean, I think we mentioned earlier, uh, computer vision scenarios. Like if I have an existing model for a computer vision, uh, sure, I can probably do computer vision at the edge, but uh, like the model will might be super big. And like, uh, are, are there like, um, are you aware of of solutions that help in in that regard? Yeah, so that's probably one of the most common use cases that you can think of when we talk about machine learning in the edge, right? One of our partners, Vitatech, which is the silicon provider for MT three six two zero, has a neural pilot micro SDK which essentially allowed you to run a TensorFlow model in Codex M-Core. But instead of me talking, why not we just jump into the short demos that we have? Sure. So what are we looking at? So right now, you are looking at a, a um, architect that, uh, architecture that is powered by Sphere, uh, that connecting to a video that doing object detection. Um, you can see it can detect dog, car, and also as well the person detections at the same time. Um, so not only the pictures, but you also can see some of the video feed that was showing to the camera. Um, it can detect uh, in a pretty good performance, to be honest, if you look at the uh, the hardware uh, that we are running on top of that. Um, I see. And so I, I bet like that's so that's typically a model that would be uh, that would be pretty big. So like uh, like it might not even fit in, in the memory of the device, I guess. Like so what uh, in a nutshell, do, do you know how how they achieved uh, this? That, that's a great question. Um, typical, so if it, the, the, so the demo that you're looking at right now, um, it implemented two, basically two strategy. One is MediaTek have taking full advantage of the multi-core architectures that provided by Azure Sphere by splitting the video analytic workload in each of the core. So in Sphere, we have two M4 core, as Miguel mentioned. So one core is doing person detections and the other core is doing object detections. And even though uh, the, the individual model might be too big, right? Um, that's come to the, the, the kind of like a secret sauce that come, coming out from the media tech, which is what they call, uh, we can extend the capability beyond the RAM. So it allowed you to load the model into the flash itself and dynamic load it into the RAM on the fly. So it helped you to kind of expand the RAM requirements that uh, requirements from the models. Okay, um, but how about, I mean, I'm sure there's still um, use cases where folks may want to build uh, their own model from scratch. Uh, like us, have you 
actually done that. Like I, I know I'm not myself like a data scientist. So whenever there is Python, uh, do you have any uh, like experience in that regard? Yeah. So coming from a device developer background, I totally can resonate to, to your experience. Um, data science is definitely way beyond my head. Uh, you know, like if we want to create a good machine learning model, we need to clean the data, extract features, select algorithm, all sorts of things. And I need to go back to, for school on this one, right? Um, and that's what I like about the last partners that we are showcasing here. Edge, we are showcasing here, Edge Impulse. Um, Edge Impulse is providing a complete tiny ML platform, a development environment platform that will allow you to create your models seamlessly uh, from a platform and deploy it to the, um, to the microcontroller class of device. But instead of me talking, Benjamin, I know you have done a lot of works with Edge Impulse on, on, your, on, on your site. Uh, why not you show us some of your work uh, with Edge Impulse? Sure, of course. Um, so yeah, Edge Impulse is this tool that uh, helps with all things um learning right and well in inference as well but uh, in terms of learning uh, and training um what i've done is essentially hook up my secure device to edge impulse and i can easily uh, using a, a local daemon on my machine on my local pc connect it and forward the data coming from the accelerometer or any sensor really into edge impulse here uh, acquiring some data uh, vibration data uh, is the device still or is it detecting vibrations and then automatically i can use the built-in uh, building blocks in um, edge impulse to uh, run uh, to do the feature extraction the, the, what they call spectral analysis so uh, automatically it runs some uh, runs some fft's and whatnot to uh, extract um, a signal uh, from my signal uh, and we can see visually that uh, it seems to be the case indeed uh, there is some meaningful um, data that we can run through the neural network uh, like automatically the default configuration gets me uh, pretty far already the accuracy only 43 percent while going all the way to 100 percent now that i did a few more training cycles and um, yeah we can test the data and we can export a c++ library that's ready to use uh, in, in sphere or any other embedded application really and that's um yeah that's the beauty of it one thing that i realize we haven't talked about but maybe that's uh, a good news i don't know you, you you guys tell me is how about iot like we've been uh going pretty deep i think into a uh, tiny ml but how about sort of iotifying your tiny ml uh tiny intelligent devices uh, like what, what's the next step essentially to take those insights into into the cloud into um existing um enterprise systems yeah, that, that's the beauty of Azure Sphere, right? Um, Azure yeah. Sphere comes with a full suite of uh, IoT fications, I would say, um, all the way up from device security um, to cloud connectivity to uh, your, um, you know, OS, everything, everything comes from Sphere um, out of the box. So that, that's a good thing if you run the TinyML on Azure Sphere. I see. So you have all the APIs, all the tools that we've mentioned uh, from like uh, all the various partners in the TinyML ecosystem. And then, so that's for the TinyML part. And then for all things IoT, you have all the like similar APIs and SDKs that just like ship with Sphere, I guess, right? Yeah, out of the box. So which means you can develop your own solutions tomorrow. <laughs> I see. So maybe that's what we want to people to do next right what what, yeah. what do you think people watching us should, should should be doing like there's literally tons of sensors uh yep. out there for uh for like sensing the world maybe mm -hmm. maybe people can try and like get a, a sphere dev kit or something and get get started with it absolutely get a sphere dev kit uh get the azure subscriptions and yeah you're off to go cool uh so yeah Folks, just uh, let us know what crazy, um, what cool, crazy projects you, you're going to build. Tell us in the comments. Uh, make sure to uh, to subscribe to to the channel, and uh, there will be a, a blog post linked below with tons of links to the various um, things that uh, Miguel and Lycus uh, talked about, with lots of sample codes and so on. So yeah, please try it out. Let us know your experience, and talk soon.